What's up you guys, this is Dan Zaidi Man for ZHM Entertainment, Zaid Mutala and I have been really blessed today. So, so I got up, I switched on the geezer and I was like okay from here things can only get better. So I made my way over to Cosmic Comics where I was chatting to Shane and I had, I was blessed again with the opportunity to meet this gentleman over here. So hi sir, what is your name? Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Jack Me. Let me tell you about this gentleman. This gentleman, we were there at Cosmic Comics and I was feeling sorry for myself about how my knees are aching and I can't manage. And then this gentleman bounces in and he was just so full of life and so full of excitement um, just in relation to, you know, comic book collecting as well. So I had to dig him a little bit just to ask him what was the secret. So doctor, would you be able to tell my viewers more about yourself and your journey and whatnot as well? Well, what can I tell you, Zane? First of all, as you heard, I'm a doctor. I'm not a youngster anymore. I'm another in a less than a year, I'll be 80. And uh, I've been active my whole life. I come from nearby where you come from. I come from North Natal, from a town called Freyheit. I was born and bred there in 1938. And I'm still around to tell the tale and uh, I qualified, I, I did my matric there and I went on to University of Wits, qualified as a doctor, I went back to Freyheit for another 14 years and then I came back to Joburg again and I'm here still and I'm not all that happy being in this town because to me this is a rat race. <laughs> I prefer the country life, I wish I was back there. <laughs> and uh, but I keep myself busy I'm still practicing as a doctor I haven't given up I don't have much of a practice anymore because who wants to come to an old 79 year old doctor not that he doesn't know more than all the youngsters in fact experience is there the technology may not be there but the art of medicine is still there of course, of course and I still practice a little bit and I still see a few patients and I keep myself busy but over and above that, I have uh, some other things, uh, like I collect books, I collect records. My house, as you will testify, looks like a third-rate uh, third junk shop. <laughs> I've got records here for, you can't believe, both all the 78s and the LPs and the CDs and tapes. I've got them all, and I've got all the necessary players. I run a few societies for music. And uh, I keep myself active. I don't want to sit around and wait for that day that we all have to have that appointment. You know that appointment that we have to keep? Ah, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> we all have to keep it one day. But I'm trying to avert it and keep them away, you know. That's, there's plenty of time still when I can rest one day. But not yet. I'm not ready to rest. And uh, I'm glad you came to interview me. thing that got me today was the mission you're currently on to try to find your comic books to find your comic books <laughs> from back in the day the good old days in Freyd. now i'm surprised that you know in Freyd of all those people now those of you who know Freyd, Freyd is like one of those one road towns i'm from a one road town like ladysmith and i work in bergville and 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 that is a city compared to Freyd, right but no, now no, you're wrong you know hey at one time Freyd was buying with ladysmith to be the same size as ladysmith wow no way yes i'm country. telling you Freyd is uh, was buying to be the same size as ladysmith oh okay Freyd no, is a big town it's not a small no. little village Spoken like a true Frey Hadian. No, think, no, no, Frey is term. still a big town. I go there regularly. I still have some interests there. I see, I see. And you, you, you're going to meet that gentleman just now. He was one of my tenants in Frey. He's coming to visit me. Well, I'm looking forward to that. But sir, please tell me. Tell me now about, you know, you were telling us uh, at Cosmic Comics about, uh, you know, your comic book collection from back ah, in the day. Yes. And what you do. So could you tell us more Look, about that? Look, I've please? been a chronic. It's Probably it's an illness, this business of being a collector. You always you don't want to get, uh, get rid of something that you pay good money for and you like it and you keep it. And I used to be like that with my comics. I used to love my comics and I used to collect them. And then one day I came home, many years later I was growing up and I was looking around for the comics and they were gone. My mother got rid of them. I don't know what she did with them, but they were gone and I was very unhappy about that. And I've always had a yen to have a look and to, just to read them again. But what I did in the meantime, in later years, when I was an adult, they used to sell these little war books, little comics. Yes, yes. War books. 
And I've got a collection which I never actually got rid of. And now we didn't have my mother around to throw them out. <laughs> so I kept them. And I have a carton around lying somewhere in this, this house of mine. But I don't know where they are. I must have a couple of hundred of them still lying around. That is amazing. That is just such an amazing story though. So, but now, um, you know, okay, from, so, so when, when, when you were a little boy and you were collecting, could you give us a rough idea of the timeline that was in, like, like roughly around which years are we talking about? We're talking about the late 40s and the early 50s. No, probably more the late 40s. And even middle 40s, I used to collect, there used to be jungle comics and jumbo comics and uh, Sheena comics, I think it was called, and then there was the Captain Marvel, and um, and then there was also Superman comics. I used to have them all, and then of course they had the the the, the funny comics like Archie. Yes, uh, Archie was a wonderful character, this American character, and I used to collect a lot of Archies. I remember him. I don't remember the others at the moment. It'll come back to me if I think very carefully. And then, of course, there was Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and all those stories as well. But they didn't really, I mean, those were fairy tales. But yes. the others, the Archie was something you could laugh at. And then I remember an aunt of mine used to always send me from Johannesburg. She used to send it by parcel post. There were two, there were the English comics they had. There was the Dandy and the yes, Beano yes, 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 I of those, and yeah. the Boy's Own. And she used to send them always to me and I used to collect them. I used to love it. And one character stood out, which I'll never forget. There was always a series in the Dandy comics. It was called Keyhole Kite. And Keyhole Kite was a thin, very thin, uh, skinny old lady with a bun in her hair, very much like olive oil from, yes, from, Popeye, uh, from, from Popeye. Popeye, yes. yes, yes but yes. she had a long nose. And she was always putting her nose into a keyhole to see what was going on the other side <laughs> of the door. Keyhole kite. I see what you, I see what they did there. But you know, sir, that, that is just so amazing. That's that's such an amazing thing, you know. Uh, so now, uh, okay. So obviously now you're coming from an era. I, I, I'm sorry, there's no politically correct way of putting it, but you know, you're coming from an era where you know comic books and comic book collecting and just this 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 genre of of entertainment, as it were, as it were rather. Is it was sort of like you know on the fringe of society, and now you have been able to see, um, as you know now, um, comic book culture has really sort of come into the focus as part of popular culture. You know, I mean, you see, I mean, just yesterday we were at Rage, and um, you know we saw hundreds of people in cosplays, um, you know, dressed up as these characters and, and role playing them, and you know it's it's just really sort of made its way into um, you know okay into popular culture. So. As a, as a stalwart in the community, as somebody now who has been through the journey, you know, just with the medium itself, with the comic book medium itself, how does that make you feel to see it now, you know, comic books back then, and see them now, how it's going now? Uh, I'm very disappointed in now. They've become very expensive, and uh, they've become, I don't know, they're not the comics that we knew of old. Yeah. The old, it was a comic. It was like a newspaper magazine type of thing. Now they become they become very good works of art. They collectibles now, not in those days. I see. So would you say that you know um, perhaps okay? I, I like the, the phrase you use. You know, like it is a work of art. But but would you say that perhaps the price of of these things has made it slightly less accessible to, oh, yes. to some folks? Oh yes, for for sure. Because I. I Look, I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm a pauper, but I'm not exactly a wealthy man, and I certainly wouldn't like to buy and waste my money on that. I've got other things to buy, which I prefer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, you can see in magazines, uh, things like this, The Economist, you know, I've, I've matured a little bit, The Economist and Time Magazine and things like that. That's my interest today, but... Uh, yeah, you know, when one grows up, I suppose, but I still like to look at the comic. I still like them. And if I could get hold of the old comics, which I used to enjoy. I'll tell you the other series I used to love was the old classic comics. I used to call it classic yes. collection, I think it was. There was Ivanhoe and there was oh, yes. Moby Dick and there was... Prince uh, Valiant back then. No, Prince Valiant wasn't... A, he didn't come into the classics as far as I can remember. Yes. And there was The Last of the Mohicans and... Uh, oh, there was a whole lot of the old, old classic books, 
which were transposed into comic form. Oh, okay, okay, I understand that. Yes. And people used to say, have you ever read that book? I used to say, yes, not that I ever did, because I read the classic <laughs> comic about it. But it gave, gave the full story. I'll never, there was a tale of two cities, for instance. There was another one. Well, wait, there were Shakespeare comics. No, they weren't Shakespeare so much as they were Dickens. You know what, okay, now my, I, I, I'm actually very, very embarrassed about that. that. That awkward moment now, you can see what a savage I really am. No, 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 you have a different generation. <laughs> you, we can forgive you for that. Ah, oh, thank you. Whew, okay, <laughs> right. No, 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 that's you have a different generation. Yeah, I'm talking about 60, 70 years ago. Yes. The classic books of those days were transposed into comic form. And uh, there was, uh, what other ones were there? Oh, I can't remember anymore now. They even had the old Bible in transposed into a comic form and different read, stories. Read, read, read. I'm sorry, I have to start the, the Bible, as in the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible, but they, yeah, they transposed it into comic form as well. You could look at it that way. And people would, could read the Bible that way. <laughs> Made it more interesting than reading it in the, in the old classical language that the Bible was written in. They put it into comic form, everybody could read it and they enjoyed it. So, Doctor, with that being said, uh, I have to ask, now, as somebody who's had, you know, a few years of experience, you know, pretty badly, of experience in the art of collecting, as it were, I must ask you now, um, you know, do you have any tips or any advice for would-be collectors or aspiring collectors or anything like that, you know, just, just from your experience, you know, would you be able to talk to us about that? I would say collect what you like to collect. Don't collect things you don't like. You've got to have an interest in what you're doing. And if you have that interest and you're passionate enough about it, then you'll collect it. Now, you talk about my record collection. I mean, I'm not boasting, but it's true. You've seen an example of it already. I must have about five or 6,000 old 78 records lying around here. I must have about seven or 8,000 old LPs. I haven't shown them to you yet. Um, lying around here and I've got the players for them still I use them and sometimes I make my own uh, uh, CDs well I record my own stuff put it onto CD and I play my own collections and I love it then I'm also involved with different music societies playing this genre of music which you don't hear anymore unfortunately yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting you mentioned that. So now you see this tendency of, um, you know, like disc jockeys, as you call them, like, you know, where you have a guy coming with a laptop and he's basically making and playing all his music on his computer. Yeah. So what, <laughs> I, 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 this is probably an unfair question to ask you, but I'm just going to try my luck. Anyway, how does it make you feel knowing that this is where music is going right now? You very, know? very sad. Yeah. Very sad because it's going to be lost. And it's only a few nuts like me who keep it going, who keep it alive. I showed you some of my collection there. That's only some of it. There's a lot more I've got to show you still. <laughs> I'm very looking forward to it. But you know what, Doctor? Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's, it's really been, it's, really been a, 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 it's my singular honor and pleasure. But I have one more you. bit of advice for you. Yes, yes. Anybody who's over the age of 50 or 60, don't look forward to retirement. Don't even think of retirement because all you do... You're going into the waiting room. You know what the waiting room is? Uh, uh, no, not really. Waiting for that big Boeing to come and fetch you forever. Ah, okay, okay. No, that's that, that that's that, that, that that's words to live by. Words to live by. That, no, don't give it up. Don't don't. Don't wait to give up room. what you do. Whatever you can do, and you're physically able to do it, do it, because you'll live to a ripe young an old age or young age. I don't know how you want to call it. And you'll appreciate it and you'll enjoy it. The day you give up, then you can go and sit in your wheelchair and wait to die. And that's not for me. That's not it. And there you have it, guys. I must say this has been such such an inspirational, uh, such an inspirational interview. I, I speak to a lot of people, but very rarely do I walk away having come out learning something about life as a whole. So 
Um, yeah, wow, it just gives me so much of hope. So I, for one, will not be in that waiting room, not now, not ever, because it's there's just there's just way too much out there in life. There's just way too much to do, too much to see, and just too much stuff to collect, really, to waste any time doing that. So I will chat to you guys soon. Ciao.